Hey everybody, Aaron Count Sage Dynamics, and this is my review of the OSS Suppressors Helix QD. Probably about eight years ago, I encountered an OSS suppressor for the first time. I was taking this class in uh, Mississippi, and there were some LE guys out of Florida that had them on their precision bolt guns. And my initial impression with the suppressor at the time was it was heavy, it was kind of bulky, uh, it was very heavy for its profile, and it wasn't very quiet. So I kind of put uh, OSS in the back of my mind as a suppressor that I wanted to check out going forward in the future because I just wasn't impressed with that suppressor. But I'm always willing to give things a second chance, uh, especially when OSS reached out to me and said, hey, we'd like to send you one of our suppressors and see if we can change your mind. I love having my mind changed. Um, most people don't. I particularly, I'm, I'm a big fan of it. I like being able to see that a product has improved over my initial expectations or my initial impressions or my initial experience if it's something I used for a very long time and it got better. So they sent the suppressor out and I put it through my normal 2000 round review process. First thing I noticed about the uh, Helix when I got it straight out of the box was the weight. It's considerably lighter than what I was expecting based on my prior experience with OSS suppressors. Now, keep in mind, I had an experience with a 308 can. Wasn't my can, just got to use it for a little while. Uh, but I'd seen uh, older variants of the OSS suppressors come through classes occasionally in 556, 223, and kind of the same story. Not super, not super quiet, kind of heavy. Um, other than that, they seem to be pretty good suppressors. So. I wanted to keep an open mind as open as possible going into the review process with the Helix QD. Now getting into fe features of the Helix QD, it's a 17, just over 17 ounces, uh, if you round up a little bit, 17.6 ounces, with an overall length of just under six and a half inches. So it's right there in that sweet spot for your common length, common weight that you see a lot on 223-556 suppressors. Uh, diameter, again, is nothing uh, nothing outlandish or nothing you're not, not necessarily used to. It's just over 1.5 inches in diameter, so uh, it's not presenting a large profile that's going to interact or, I should say, block any kind of weapon lights or lasers like that. The material is steel and titanium, which are two very venerable materials to make suppressors out of. You don't always have to go with some kind of super crazy exotic material uh, for a suppressor to be effective and functional. Coating on the suppressor is Cerakote, which is Cerakote is a pretty common coating you see. Uh, in my experience and some other suppressors is their, their coating of Cerakote uh, doesn't necessarily have the same high temp resistance that you see from other suppressors. I've had cans that, you know, I got two or three hundred rounds through them and I started to bake off or burn off that coating which is going to expose the metal underneath it, which if you're using stainless steel or a, a similar metal that, that is prone to rust, that's definitely a problem. So I was hoping going into the review of the Helix QD I wasn't going to run into that because during my 2000 round review process, you know, I do tend to get the suppressors pretty hot, run them pretty hard. The Helix QD is quoted as being full auto rated, which I have the ability to check that out. Uh, full auto rated manufacturer specifications and of course there's mil spec definition of what full auto rated is. You can definitely look up the mil spec definition of what that's going to be. It's not a test schedule that I necessarily use. Uh, generally I just use it during my normal practice. If I'm working on some select fire drills or something like that, it's going to get run on select fire. Uh, I do also include select fire usually uh, in the actual burn down process, which we'll get to. What sets OSS apart from a design standpoint is their flow through design as opposed to your traditional baffle design. Uh, the interior of the can is designed to push the gas or let the gas flow through the suppressor in a helical pattern which is supposed to uniformly um, provide your normal sound reduction and not unduly disturb uh, the actual harmonics, if you will, or bullet performance of the bullet as it exits the suppressor. So it's not going to create any significant accuracy issues or accuracy shifts from suppressed to unsuppressed. 
some problems uh, you see with suppressors is um, they tend to, well, I know I've had it in the past where I've had a quick detach or quote unquote quick detach suppressor that actually made a gun shoot less accurate when suppressed because the can had movement on the muzzle and that created issues and shifts uh, as the rounds were leaving the suppressor. So every time you pulled the trigger, the suppressor was in a slightly different position uh, and that caused my groups to open up. Usually on thread on or really good QD suppressors, you actually see them tighten up the overall performance of the gun. Because I am a huge fan of long stroke piston ARs, I used the uh, OSS primarily on my PWS Mark 111 Mod 2. It's a long stroke piston, three setting piston system. First thing I noticed about putting the OSS on there is it does not behave like any other suppressor I've ever put on a piston gun. Generally with uh, the PWSs and similar piston systems, you have to tune the gas down for the suppressor. With the OSS, I ran it full open, just like I would on, um, well, unsuppressed. So I had it on an unsuppressed setting and it was providing the same recoil pulse I would expect from a suppressed setting with a different suppressor. So the recoil pulse through a piston gun was great. I also ran it on DI. Uh, I wanted to check both of those things out. Um, one thing that uh, OSS prides themselves on is, is the, uh, the ability to limit the amount of gas that comes back into the shooter's face. And that's you know something I've got to put to the test myself. Firing the OSS on three different barrel lengths, the first thing I notice is yes, there is still gas coming back into the chamber. I think that's always gonna be unavoidable just based on the nature that most rifles work, direct impingement, even long stroke piston. There's still gas coming back into the bolt carrier group. What I did notice about that gas as it was coming back into the, the bolt carrier group is the gas was not under pressure. It just seemed to kind of like be wisping, if you will, out of the chamber, as you'd expect from an unsuppressed rifle when the bolt was open. Uh, so I wasn't getting high pressure vents of gas or little puffs of gas hitting me in the face, which I definitely appreciated. Another big point of contention, if you will, that I have with suppressors is muzzle devices. If I have to get a suppressor from a different manufacturer, I'm gonna to have to get their muzzle device. And some companies make really great suppressors, not so much on muzzle devices. OSS sent me three of their flash hiders. Now I am a flash hider snob. I prefer a flash hider as my go-to muzzle device. The only exception to that is Surefire's Hybrid War Comp, which is part kind of a comp, but mostly a flash hider, or the, the venerable Battle Comp. If I had to use just a compensator, wasn't worried about suppressing, uh, putting a suppressor on the gun, a uh, Battle Comp would be my go-to compensator but primarily I use pretty much nothing but flash hiders. OSS flash hider is a really good design. It does exactly as advertised, it suppresses flash. It also makes for a good mounting system, uh, continual return to zero, which is something I'm looking for. Now, they call the Helix a QD, even though it is a thread on suppressor. So similar to some taper mounts or some direct thread cans you've seen in the past, it just kind of goes on there. And it's uh, got little pictographs on here so you don't turn it the wrong way and over tighten it or torque it down. You've got wrench flats on it as well. So if you really want to vice this thing down and leave it on there for an extended period of time. Another great thing about the uh, relationship between the suppressor and the lack of baffles because of their flow through design and the muzzle devices, I'd never had this suppressor carbon lock on me. And I think that's the first time in my history of using suppressors I've ever had a suppressor go through what I put a suppressor through and not carbon lock on me occasionally to where it makes it very difficult to get off the gun or in certain cases with certain suppressors because the tolerances are so tight, I didn't have to shoot it off the gun. So I really appreciated the fact that just with a little extra torque, if you will, I was always able to un, uh, unscrew or remove the, the HXQD. Sound suppression is definitely better than I remember from OSS products of the past. I used it on, again, my, my 11.85 uh, PWS. I also used it on a 12-inch uh, uh, ballistic advantage and a 16-inch ballistic advantage. So I used it on multiple barrel lengths and got multiple sample sizes, if you will, of the hearing or sound reduction, the hearing attenuation that I'm gonna get from those multiple barrel lengths. Usually shorter, shorter rifles uh, are louder. That's just kind of a rule of, of uh, ballistic behavior as far as sound goes. Um, no can is, is by OSHA definition or really common sense definition actually hearing safe, but I'm definitely way, way, way below the pain threshold that you'd see on some shorter suppressors. Uh, shooting it uh, undercover near trees and of course out in the open is, is the easiest place uh, to get below that pain threshold. But indoor use, I didn't experience any pain at the ear when shooting it. Still a good idea, especially for prolonged use to throw some ear pro on, uh, even though you're suppressed. But if you're gonna set it up for a home defense situation or put it on a patrol rifle, you can rest assured that even in confined quarters, you're gonna be able to shoot and not experience direct pain to your ears.
Of course, some of you are waiting for the burn down. What is the burn down? 500 rounds accelerated rate of fire, just to get an idea of how the suppressor performs when it's run really, really hard. Of course, my caveat to that as usual is 500 rounds and usually it takes me about three and a half to four minutes depending on which, which uh, firearm I'm using uh, is a ridiculous rate of fire. It's bordering on abuse, but I wanna see if the suppressor can handle the increased rate of fire and see if heat causes any issues with um, the mounting or hearing. Uh, if it actually, some suppressors, you know, I, I've seen suppressors in the past that actually get louder uh, the hotter the suppressor gets. And I'm also checking on overall strength and integrity of the suppressor's design, the welds, and seeing uh, if finally the coating can hold up to the, the suppressor getting way, way up there in temperature. Call that hot. There you go, 500 rounds as fast as I could get them down range, uh, within reason. I could have done them all select fire, but I think that'd be a little unfair to any suppressor. 500 rounds in just about four minutes, it took me to get them all down range, mixing back and forth. Uh, suppressor got nice red hot, but didn't loosen up, didn't experience any issues. Uh, from first to last round, I didn't notice a difference in the sound suppression, or say a difference in the sound suppression. And the Cerakote held up nicely, not only through the burn down, but throughout the 2000 round review process. It's not all about durability though. Uh, rock can be nice and durable. It doesn't necessarily mean it's precise. So another check that I do on suppressors is uh, accuracy. Am I gonna be able to maintain uh, the same accuracy uh, on a rifle, chosen rifle, as I get with that rifle being unsuppressed? For these purposes, I used uh, kind of a, basically an upper receiver I built using BCM parts and a Ballistic Advantage 16 inch Hanson profile barrel. Uh, put it on there and uh, well, the rifle's capable of sub-MOI accuracy. So of course, putting the suppressor on, I wanna make sure it still maintains that accuracy, and it definitely did. The OSS did not open up the group. In fact, it actually tightened it up just a little bit. But that's only part of the equation. So here's a five round group suppressed. So that gives you an idea of the OSS's capabilities as far as accuracy is concerned, fired at 100 yards. Now, removing the suppressor, fired another five round group to see if there's any significant point of aim, point of impact shift on a gun that's zeroed suppressed, take the suppressor off, see if there's a shift. As with almost any firearm and any suppressor, there's going to be a slight shift, point of aim, point of impact. The OSS shift is noticeable. Uh, there's no getting around that. However, it is repeatable and manageable. I threw the suppressor back on, took the suppressor off, threw the suppressor on, took the suppressor back off, and I was getting that same shift more or less every single time within, within probably about an MOA. So I'm very happy with the fact that the point of aim, point of impact shift going from suppressed to unsuppressed uh, is repeatable. And of course, the third thing you need to be concerned about when adding and taking off suppressors on rifles is it gonna return to zero if the rifle is zeroed for the suppressor. So throwing the suppressor back on, firing another five round group at 100 yards. I'm happy with that performance. I'm happy with that return to zero. It may have been a slight shift. Uh, I, I shot that group, the one for record, uh, but I've since shot it again, and I haven't noticed a, a, the, the same slight shift that you may have been able to detect there in the groups, so it may have just been a shooter's issue. Uh, but even if it was a slight shift, we're getting into a very, very small measurement, and if my point of aim was one square inch, then I was gonna successfully return to be able to hit that one square inch after taking this presser off, putting this presser back on. So what's my final verdict on the OSS Helix QD? 
I think it's a really good suppressor. I'm impressed with the design and they have definitely changed my mind from my initial experiences with OSS products almost 10 years ago. Everybody has a right to improve and a right that's, uh, everybody, every product is worth at least a second look going forward because people are constantly, hopefully, trying to improve the products that they produce. Uh, if you're looking for a suppressor that gets away from your traditional baffle design, you're looking for something that's going to limit amount of gas back to your face on DI and piston gun, even though piston guns generally you don't have as much gas coming back to the shooter's face, but gas is still coming back, like I said. The Helix is definitely worth worth a look. If you're just looking for a suppressor that's going to be very, very hard use, 5.56, 223 specific, uh, and of course, they make 30 cal cans as well, but I've only, you know, spent 2,000 rounds on this particular suppressor. This is something that's definitely going to go into my rotation. It's something you could take a hard look at as well. The muzzle devices are really good. I like the simplicity of the mounting system. I like taper mounts. I like direct threads, generally more than QD. There's only a couple exceptions to that with some other suppressors that are out there. Uh, so, if you kind of looked at OSS like, ah, oh, it's kind of a gimmick, you know, they're trying to do things different. I would go ahead and take them out of the gimmick category, definitely. Uh, the design lends itself very well to suppressing gunshots, which is what we want, and it's able to suppress gunshots with a high rate of fire if that's something you're also interested in. If you have a hard-use rifle or you take a lot of rifle-specific classes where you're going to have high round counts in very short periods of time or just occupationally three-gun or whatever it is you're shooting, uh, they definitely deserve a look. Their muzzle devices are great. The mounting system is great. Suppressor is very well built. It's very rigid. It's very rugged. It's going to provide you exactly what you want, which is sound suppression that can take a beating. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, definitely big thumbs up, and I'm glad OSS was able to change my mind. I'm Aaron Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.